Hey guys, what's going on? This is Matt here, and welcome back to the Black Ops Dream Mod Tools tutorial series. So then, in this video, I'm going to be going over some lighting. Now, these are only pretty basic things. Um, you can do a lot more advanced things, do a lot more um, cool things as well. But for this video, I'm going to be going, going over Omni Lights and Spotlights. So Omni Lights are effectively what you'd use for things like lamps, where it, it basically radiates from the centre of the light. In, a, in like a sphere sort of shape so everywhere then you also have spotlights which of course things like this you know they radiate downwards or in a certain you know, in a certain um so they project downwards or in a certain direction so let's get straight into it so first of all we actually need a light of course i've set these up ahead of time just to actually demonstrate the light itself so go over to your entity browser you can right click up here and go down to entity browser then i just search for the term light and down here you'll see unsorted unsorted light okay and we'll left click and drag that into my map of course you can add it to favorites by right clicking toggle favorite and that adds it to down here i have that because i use them of course you know quite frequently so we'll position this just into the center of the lamp that's pretty much where it should be next i'm going to use my entity info but i can right click up here and go down to entity info and this is now is where I'm going to change the key, the KVP, so that's key, key value pairs. So, first of all, I'm going to change the colour of it. I'm going to use this one that I've already picked. Okay, let's do that. So, a lot of these values are completely irrelevant to an Omni light. Some of these are relevant though only to a spotlight, and sometimes to other things as well. I'm going to be going through some of the most important values, not the entire thing, okay? Just the things that I use typically, and I know what they actually do properly. So, in terms of scale, you want to be putting that up. I can't really explain exactly what it does. All I know is it's something to do with like the light bake, you know, the light compile. Um, typically, you want it to be about a four or maybe even higher than that. Um, people don't believe it as a one usually. Um, I've just been given advice sort of, you know, between four, four and eight, I find is pretty normal. People tend to be using. Um, I'm sure someone in the comment section though can uh, make. Uh, make a bit more sense of what intensity what intensity scale actually does um maybe may wrong here but as far as i'm aware it's just based on so when you obviously you have all your light bouncing you know reflections of things and of course you know how prominent that light really is um when you're baking the lighting increasing that makes it bounce more i think hopefully that's correct i'm not too sure so anyway Back onto stuff I actually do know what I'm on about. <laughs> so stops. This is the uh, well, literally how bright it is. So let's say I was put it down to five, much less bright. Put it up to let's say twenty, really bright. I'm gonna keep it on about eleven though, because that looks pretty good. So that's based on how bright you want it to be. Shadow map is if you want a shadow or not. So if I switch that, you can see I've got shadows. I'm gonna leave it as it is. Though. Actually, I'm gonna put shadows on because I need to demonstrate something later with the shadow. Primary type, of course, is your type of light. So at the moment, we're doing Omni. Um, next, we'll be doing Spotlights, um, just in a second. We'll leave it on Omni. So go down a bit more down to here. Now have bulb length. So if I bump this up to, let's say, a 25, see the actual light gets longer. So if you're doing, let's say, a bar light, or, you know, a fluorescent, you know, like a fluorescent light on the roof, typically they're longer, you know, they're not just a bulb. You'll be using that to make the actual light itself um, more like a rectangle right more than you know just like a like a sphere or cylinder even that's probably more accurate actually <laughs> so put that down to zero so cut on we're not going to be messing with that that's for a spotlight uh, enable fall off so that's basically how you know the obviously as the light starts the light intensity will fall off but if i don't enable it you can see it's always super bright i want it to be looking more realistic though so let's keep that on Fall off distance is of course the distance it takes for the light to for its intensity to fall off. Far edge is this is on our base on intensity, so you can see I have like a you know outer sort of circles and an inner circle. If I now mess about with this, you can see the brightness changes because I'm altering stuff like this. So this of course this outer one, this is the actual size of the light. And this is basically the part where the light is now going to start falling off. Okay, so I'm going to leave it as uh, 0.7 actually, that's pretty good. FOV outer is for spotlights, I just remembered. I don't know why I just messed about with that. It's for spotlights. Radius is of course the size of the light. So let's say you bump this up to 150. It's much larger. 
Okay, so ignore the rest of it. This is all based on well, spotlights and you know flashing lights, strobe lights, things like that. Volumetric is pretty much. I don't think you can even use this in Omni lights. I'm pretty sure it's all for spotlights. Works effectively. You know how you have a light sometimes, and you have maybe some particles sort of floating around in the light. Maybe it's a bit foggy. You know, it looks like a bit of fog is coming out of it almost. These are called volumetric lights. Um, once we get onto volumetrics, that's a whole other video. So I'll be going into more detail with that eventually. Uh, lights and states. This is pretty much whether you want your lights to be on or off in different situations. So typically. When you first start your map, your map will be in light state 1. When you turn your power on, your light will be in light state 2. So maybe I don't want this light to be on until the power is turned on. Therefore, I can just quickly deselect that. And that will only be on now when the power is on. That's the example there. So, let's go down to here. And let's go down to... Let's go down to shadow map. And I'll end... So, penumbra radius, sorry. And I'll end it on this and then we'll move over to the spotlight. So this is based on your shadows. So at the moment you can see the shadow is, you know, relatively straight lines. Typically you wouldn't have straight lines so sometimes. So if I alter this, you can see suddenly the shadows get a bit more blurry. Okay. So depending on what you're working with and whether the shadow would be very, very sort of, you know, quite well defined. Or it would be a bit more blurred like that. You can alter that depending on, you know, what you need. I'm going to leave it at about 10. Just because I feel like that's you know looks pretty damn decent. So then let's, let's uh, move over to a spotlight over here. So then, uh, but if you're wondering what I keep stuff for, every now and then I uh, I stop recording and sort of start again, just in case I make a mistake, I don't need to do the entire thing all over you know, from scratch. Something I've learnt from doing these over the past couple of days. <laughs> so then, uh, spotlight. Let's drag. So let's right click and drop a light into the map. Of course I added to, I added that to my favourites, so I can do that now. And let's just place this up at the bulb. That'll do. So let's change the colour of this. There we go. Of course you can you know you can use whatever colour you want depending on what you're doing. Um, so then let's first of all change this to a spotlight. There we go, so now we have a spotlight. Now First thing we need to do, I'm not going to be going over the same settings that I've just been doing, you know, we kind of know what all that does now. Pretty basic, uh, just general light stuff, you, know, you just get used to that within a bit of time. So, first of all, I need to make this so it's actually, so this light is actually within this, okay? So you notice these lines over here, they're not level with this. So let's first of all move this up. Okay, so it's not, you know, it looks like it's coming out of the light. Next, I need to make this into an actual circle. So I'm going to go down to roundness and put that up to 1. Now much more round. That's, that's, what, that's you know how it works like the roundness of the actual light. Okay, so next you can see we have it shining down onto this, but we want the light to start as it's coming out of here. So that's, this is why we use cut on. So we go use this. So if I do this, you can see the light slowly starts to go down. You can see in this view, it's the line starting to go down. One more, almost there. To Twelve. I can see it starts at the very bottom of this light. So the light starts where you'd expect it to, okay? Lovely. Now I'm going to just change the far edge. As you can see, we can adjust the intensity. Let's just change the radius as well so we can go all the way down towards the floor. There we go, on the floor there. FOV outer, you can change the actual size of the light. I'm going to keep it as 95. Oops, well, I'm going to put it to 95 even. Far edge is of course, you know, what well, the intensity of it going down towards the ground. As you can see, doing it to about 0.7, that was pretty decent. Really just mess about with these values, guys. You can't really do much wrong, to be honest with you. So that's, that's a bit of the basics there. Um, ortho effect, this is, let's say you wanted a complete circle without it coming out from a point here. We can now increase it, and now you can see it's like this. So I don't know, maybe you were doing a light which was a complete circle on the ground and you wanted it you know, to be radiating out you know, upwards. Instead of putting loads of little lights all the way around, you can just adjust the ortho effect and it'll become a bit more like that, okay? Near edge is, well, the starting of the lights. So you can see it runs really intense to begin with and then oh, we, can, you know, we can have it like that, okay? So you've really just got to mess about with some of these values. So next what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this look a bit more realistic. So 
with Spotlight, which it really is all about just trial and error, learn, learning, you know, what he's doing, seeing what works best for your light. There is no right and wrong way as such to do a light. I'm just going to quickly edit this though to uh, go down to 90 so it fits. So next, this doesn't look very realistic though because we have a light coming out but no light here. So I'm going to do something about that. I'm going to put a light in there. So this now is where you're going to be using more than one light. You know, we still got our primary light up here, which is, you know, doing what we actually need it to do. But now we need to add a bit more detail to it, you know, make it look like it's actually doing something. I'm going to change the colour of it. Go down here, I'm going to change the radius. Let's do about 20, because it's only a small one. We'll change the far edge. Do about 0.5. the FOV out to down to about 10. There's no need to have it too high. Uh, what else can we do? We can adjust the stops, put it, down, put it down a little bit more. So, now you see, I've just put a little light in. Not very not very intense at all. I need to pull that back up though. And it's literally going to make it look a bit more realistic. So, if I now compile lighting. Wait for that to complete. You see down here, it was completing. So now you can see we have a lamp, which looks as you'd expect. And we also have a light, which is coming downwards. This doesn't really show it very well. I think it's just the texture in general. But this is that this would be lit now inside here. Okay, so because we've got a light here, that's basically lighting the inside of this to make it look like the light's actually coming out of the bulb. And of course, we have our spotlight to actually... There it is. To actually, you know, radiate downwards. Okay. Of course, you, you know, you can customize these however you like and do whatever you want. But that's basically the overview of lighting, okay? Uh, of course, you have your actual lighting from the sun, you know, from the outdoor areas. But in terms of indoor or, you know, additional lights, this is, this is mostly what you'll be working with, Omni and Spotlights. So then, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Of course, if you are watching this and you do know what some of these settings do um, better than I do, please leave a comment and, you know, let people know. But I think I explained it pretty well, and what I did explain was things that I use on, on, the, on a regular basis, and you know, that is exactly what they do. So yeah guys, thanks for watching this. In the next map, we're going to be going over player spawns and putting the start zone. So we're getting ready then to actually jumping into the map and looking at it from an in-game perspective, so that's going to be quite fun. And then of course we'll be looking at zombies and stuff like that. So we're really starting to get moving now on this, uh, on this series. We've got the basics, you know, we've got some of the basics out of the way. We're starting to get into more features now. Um, which is quite nice. So you guys, thanks for watching this. Thanks for the support, and I'll see you guys in the next video.